Hey, you guys, welcome back. This is Jerry Mateo with RecordingSoftware.com. Don't forget to check out the link in the description below where you can get an awesome deal on the three plugins that we're featuring today. Hey, you guys, welcome back. And today we're going to be focusing on a couple of D16 group plugins. The Nefitin, which is their really awesome 808 plugin. It has basically full control from up to 16 outputs. So you can actually process every track individually. You have your level, your tuning, your tone, your decay, your sweep. You even have accents and you have the full control and range of the loops that were originally found in the 808 that they modeled. And you have the ability to save your own. And how I use it is I like to have it set up so I can control every individual MIDI hit through the DAW. So let's just start off by bypassing the drums. Everything besides this tambourine is going through Nefitin. So let's just check out this song real quick and we will just play it from the beginning with no drums. Let's bring it in. And let's solo up the drums. We'll bypass the tambourine temporarily. Now, Nefitin sounds really good. This is basically designed to be a exact emulation of the original 808. It has all your full control. I really am enjoying the decay in the sweep section. Let me just solo that up and we'll play it for you. Check out what happens when I change the sweep. Now, I personally am a really big fan of the little sweeping sound. I think it sounds really, really cool. And I think this really helps bring a nice backbone to this song. Now, the next thing that I'm doing is I'm actually using Devastator 2, which is their multi-band distortion unit. And it basically works by splitting up the signal into three bands. And you have nine different ways of controlling the routing. Now, each routing is one, two, and three. So you have three total filters that individually control what's going on and that is all dependent on the routing that you have. So they go from off to low pass, band pass, high pass, and band reject with a resonance and Q factor and a volume control which is basically infinite or mute all the way to plus 12 dB. You have six different clipping or distortion functions and they all sound very different. Now of course you can shape them farther with the shape knob right here. You have your threshold for the clipping stage and your preamp, which can boost up to 48 dB. So you also have your dynamics, which basically tells it if it's gonna be hitting the distortion hard or if it's gonna be very, very dynamic and not touching it. So let's see what goes on with this little uh, bell that I have here. I'm gonna solo it up. We're gonna play it. Let's find a section where it plays something cool and check out what happens with a bypass and then check out what happens with it on. Cool, now let's turn it on. And let's see what it does. The reason why I'm doing it like this is because I like driving into the limiter. Let me show you what happens when I'm actually driving each individual filter section. You get a really mid-range honky sound with this filter too. We have this high-end distortion. And then filter three isn't really doing much. It's just adding some low end. And then we're using the limiter to kind of slam it into its own threshold. That way we can get that really pumped sound. Bypass. So check out what that sounds like in the mix with it off and then we'll turn it on. On. It just has a whole life of its own. Now next, we're gonna be taking a look at the little stab. For this, we're using Texturon, which is their multi-step sequence delay. I like to think of it as a delay that kind of operates like a reverb or a RT60 thing. You have everything from volume, delay, feedback, pan, spread, filter type, cutoff, and resonance. All of these can be controlled just by dragging. Now the delay section lets you go from one all the way to 16. If I set it up to 32, it still goes one to 16. That's the timing within the delay. And this is a great way to change the sound of the delay. If I set this to 100% wet and we listen to it. You can really see how it kind of changes everything up on you. 
Now, next we have the feedback, which is awesome because each individual one can have its own feedback control. Cool. Now, I personally really like the pan controls because this is where you can spread things out. So check this out. Automation is awesome with this. Next, we have a stereo spread. Down is mono and up is super wide. Let's see what this sounds like. Really cool. Now, one of the coolest features that we have filter types. Now, we have a master filter, which can go high pass, band pass, low pass, and off. But we also have the ability to have that and individually filter each actual tap. And I always have a band pass because I just like that filter sound. And check out when we mess with the cutoff frequency. We get a really nice lo-fi distorted sound and we have the resonance for all of them. And you can kind of see how I'm starting to develop a really cool reverb sound. Now I'm going to crank up the feedback a tiny bit. Bring down the mix. And let's see what happens if I bypass it and we have it in the mix. It just sounds very static, even with the cathedral style reverb that's already there. But if I turn it on, Now imagine doing lots of automated filters and curves with this. You can basically automate every single parameter. Now let's see what happens if I actually bypass all of the processes that I've been using, including the drums, and then we slowly bring them in. So here's the song. Bring in the drums. Let's bring in Texture On. And then let's bring in Devastator 2. Everything suddenly sounds wider, bigger, more in your face, and it has a lot more movement, which is really cool. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This is all really easy stuff to use once you just get a quick little handle of it. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. That's going to be it for today's video. This is Jerry Mateo with RecordingSoftware.com, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.